Hello, my name is Lorna, and today we're going to be learning how to make our own etching paper. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some crayons or oil pastels. And you're going to rub the crayons over the surface of a piece of paper. I am using some cardstock, but you could use any kind of paper. The thicker the paper, the easier it's going to be. If you are using thin copy paper, I suggest taping it down because we're going to be adding paint on top of it. And if you don't tape down thin copy paper, it will warp on you if it's not taped down. You can use it, just make sure you tape down the edges. So I'm just going over with a layer. I'm doing kind of a gradient here. So I'm going to use my light pink and fade into dark pink and then maybe some blues and i'm putting a good amount of the crayon on there my crayons are a little bit waxy but that's okay you won't be able to really tell after you've scratched off the surface I'm just making sure that I have a good amount and I'm covering from edge to edge because I don't want any of my areas to be white. If you do want some of your areas to be white, just skip over those. I have my piece of paper taped down. That's why you see a little bit of a square kind of in the center. I'm doing that so that while I'm coloring, it's not moving around on me. It's not necessary to do it won't show in the final product either so don't worry too much about it so I'm just blending over my blue over into the purple a bit and I'm gonna go through and blend all of my colors at the end and just make sure I have a nice flow between colors you could use oil pastel for this I don't recommend colored pencil or marker uh, because you're not going to get the same effect with the acrylic paint scratching it off. You need something that is kind of thick and waxy, so crayons and oil pastels. Oil pastels are going to be a little bit easier and a little bit smoother to apply. I unfortunately do not have those here at home, so, but you're welcome to use those. And so I'm just going over with a little bit of my purple, going in with some pink. Probably going to go in some pink down at the blue area again. And you can see that you can see streaks. You can see colors that are a little bit lighter. I'm not worried about getting it super consistent because I'm going to now drench it in black acrylic. So here's my black acrylic that I'm using. You can use any brand. Um, I think that actually a matte craft acrylic would work better than what I have here. Um, this one is a little bit leathery when dried, so it doesn't give you as much of a clean peel off. So I'm gonna go one direction and then I'm gonna go the other just to make sure I have a nice even coat. I have a piece of paper down on my table to protect my table. I highly recommend that you protect your table with newspaper or paper or use a table that you don't care about getting paint on. And you're gonna wanna peel this up before it dries, before your paint dries. Otherwise you'll have sealed your paper to the table with your paint. So um, if you're using tape, you can go ahead and lift that up with the tape as well. It'll give you nice clean lines. If you take your tape off of your edges after the paint is dried, you're gonna have a craggly kind of peely edge, which you don't want. So I have done that. I've let it dry completely. Um, it took about an hour for my acrylic to dry completely to where I was satisfied. And I'm just taking what's called an awl, A-W-L, and I am scratching the paint off of the surface. Now you can use a toothpick, you can use anything that is pointy and small. You could use a like lead pencil without any lead in it. That would work great. Um, you could use a sewing needle or a straight pen. Anything that is, is pointy, really. It doesn't need to be sharp because we're not trying to cut through 
art paper, but if you have something sharp, just use it gingerly. So I'm gonna go for a floral design and I'm just kind of sketching out where I want it. You can use a reference, you can draw out your design ahead of time and, and draw it on as a reference. You could trace over it on some paper as well. So you could put your, your printed paper on top of this and sketch through it would work. And I'm just kind of roughly scratching because I'm going to go back in at the end and I'm going to clean all of this up. So right now I'm just trying to lay out my basic design so I'm not too worried about little bits in between. Like I said, this paint is a little bit leathery so it is flaking off in some areas. I have done this with black craft paint. It does work a lot better. You can mattify your black acrylic by adding a little bit of cornstarch to it um, and, and that actually works. You could thin this paint out as well and do a thinner layer which would also help because this is heavy body acrylic. So as you can see my gradient is coming through it's pink at the bottom and blue at the top. So the way that you put on your crayons or your pastels is important because if you're thinking if you have a design ahead of time you can kind of plan for where you want your colors to be um, you could even plan as far as shading goes you could draw out your design color it and then sketch on top of it as well so that you get some really nice colors um, i just went for a rainbowy effect here nothing too complicated this would be a great craft to do with the kids um, I used to be a preschool teacher and we used to do these scratch cards, these etching cards for the kids and they absolutely love them. They love seeing the colors come through. It's a great color theory activity to do. Um, I've also seen these in really high-end fine art applications where they do like I was saying and they do heavy shadowing and planning beforehand then paint it. Um, usually they use India inks instead of acrylic and it just is stunning it's absolutely stunning but it takes a lot of practice to do so i'm just going around the center here making a little area adding some petals some leaves lots of texture and the design that you do is up to you you could follow along with my design you could do your own at the end here, I'm going to show you a few other designs that I did. One was by request. I had an artist request that I do a troll, so I did a troll. And I really want more of this, this pink to show through. Because I feel like I have a lot of heavy blue at the top, and it's just kind of really thin towards the bottom. I'm just going to go in and clean up some of my areas that, like I was talking about before. I did a rough sketch the first go around and now I'm cleaning up all of the areas that I want more more defined. And this is a great way that you could add texture to is wherever you leave black it will stay black. So if I wanted little black lines in the in the beginning or in the center I could have left those. Um, I want these to be pretty open and you want to make sure that you are kind of like tapping off your crumbly bits so the paint that you're scratching off is still going to kind of remain on top. You can give it a tap on its side or you can blow it off or brush it off very gently. You don't want to do it hard like push down hard because you could rip up some of your under layer. So I'm just adding in some grass because again, I want that pink to come back in. Kind of giving it a little bit more com complete of a design like this wildflower is hanging out in some little grass. I'm imagining that this is like wheat or something or maybe it's um, some lavender, something with that shape. And if you were to do a scene where this could be the sky up here, you could do green grass down below. You could do a little red farmhouse if you really plan that out. So here I am tapping it off, cleaning it off. 
and that is the finished. Now I have a bit of a glossy shine to mine, just that's the nature of my paint. I think this would look really cool in a matte finish. So I have these sleeves. I get them from gaming stores, like comic book stores. They're ultra pro sleeves. And this is an artist trading card size. So it's really small. It's three and a half by two and a half. And I like that you can see the signature on the back through it. So they're three and a half by two and a half. They're quite popular. I'm just gonna pop that in there. And it's just a really good way to protect it. Send it in the mail, give it as a gift, is to put them in there. But you could make any size scratch board that you wanted. You could make a huge one. You could make small ones like I'm doing. Again, this is two and a half by three and a half inches for a standard playing card size. So I am going to do the bumblebee next and I'm gonna speed that one up. So I did this one, the majority of it is yellow, but I did do a little bit of shading. So I have some light yellows and some dark yellows in there. And then this is the troll that was requested. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you make your very own scratch cards. The possibilities are endless. Thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe for more videos.